Um. Ah. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be hard. There we go. Ow. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me do it like this. Okay. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Welcome to my explanation of why I'm on hiatus for now. As you might have noticed this little red thing here this is my right arm and I broke my wrist um, I will show you in a moment how it looks like but from the x-ray um, it's not very good if you have uh, fo have been following me on Twitter or on Instagram you already know this uh, story, but I also want to make this stream as a bit of a video for uh, the people on uh, YouTube. Okay, <laughs> let let let's let me show you where it all started. It started with this, or actually, what it actually started with was this. This is where it all started i'm not going to blame the birds okay i'm not going to blame the birds but um i have not been using my bicycle for a while uh, and normally nothing will happen if you leave your bicycle out here in the netherlands there are so many bicycles it's not like uh, anything will happen to them if you just lock them up and you uh use them irregularly However, somewhere around April, um, somewhere around Easter, I noticed that uh, there was some moss gathered in one of the saddlebags. Um, it was the last time I actually used my bicycle, which was in April. But it was around Easter, so I was, or it is uh, an April Fool's prank by someone. That they just like put the moss in this to fool me, or someone wanted to um, hide their Easter eggs in one of the uh, many saddlebags for the kiddos. So I left the moss in. Now, at the start of May, so around like the 1st of May, I wanted to use my bicycle again. And this happened. So I want to put my stuff into the bicycle saddlebag and I looked up into this lovely face of this bird uh, who made her nest in the saddlebag. And I immediately knew like I can't use my bicycle for the rest of the summer. I have another picture over here. There. So she was laying eggs there like it, there was nothing I can do. I even asked some people uh, what uh, what are the possibilities can I remove the saddlebag from the bicycle and like please don't because you will disturb the nest uh, everyone will die in there. So I'm like I'm not going to do that. Let let them just have their nest in peace. Uh, the eggs have hatched by the way. There are six little chicks in there. Uh, so they're a happy little family in the saddlebag so I couldn't use my bike but I wanted to get more active I wanted to go anywhere and uh, walking is like a bit of slow slow activity so I was like I'm going to get some roller skates not uh, not inline skates roller skates because 25 years ago when I was about seven or eight uh, I really liked roller skating, it wasn't much, I couldn't do a lot with it, but I liked roller skating. Uh, 
it took me a while to get them. Um, my my size is not very um, in stock uh, in regards to roller skates here in the Netherlands, so it took a while before they got there. Um, and in the meantime, I have watched a lot of videos. So I watched like how to stop for beginners, how to start for beginners, uh, how to fall, how not to fall, all that kind of stuff. So I was really well prepared for this because I knew that there there would be some kind of accident. I, w I would I would fall every now and then, but I've never broken anything. So I was like, I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to strain my knee. I don't want to like bruise all over. I don't want to strain my knee or whatever. So I got them and I also got the safety gear uh, that I bought with them. I was very happy actually with these. They were very pretty and um, so I have like knee protectors, uh, elbow protectors and wrist protectors. I have all three of them. I don't have a helmet but I have those and that's already and uh, I was really like looking forward to it because I have a little place uh, behind my flat where I could practice and I was like yeah if I could do some long run maybe I could even like roll skate to uh, to work and get active like that and uh, I have friends who do uh, inline uh, skillers and they I, we could do things and um, I wasn't even outside I didn't I didn't go outside I wanted to try them on inside I even like I even adjusted the wheels a bit so they would actually roll and I adjusted the, uh, the thing I had actually um, practiced some of the movements that I needed to do for like a plow stop which is wah. plow stop is if you you go wide you go down and you go back in so you basically move your uh, knees outwards and then inwards to reduce your speed um, I did all that I did I practiced and I was like I want to see if I can actually stand on these roller skates I don't want to be in like dreary weather dreary weather um, trying to get up with roller skates and, and hurt myself I was very optimistic that I wouldn't get hurt inside so I put them on and I tried to stand up which was quite a hassle because I actually tried to stand up without the roller skates and that was already a hassle because the thing is um, there are some marvelous channels that will show you how to how to start roller skating and how to skate they, they do lessons and etc but what they forget is that they are already like skating for so many years and for them it's very easy to stay there and stay stable on those on those roller skates so the first time I tried to stand up I fell this didn't happen back then I fell I fell um, to the side and nothing happened I was just like ah oh, damn this hurts and I'm not even outside but this hurts <laughs> and um, so but I was like yeah let's try it again uh, I fell again let's try it again okay good I finally got up which is very good you know I mean uh, for someone who is like uh, morbidly obese who is not like the fittest bun uh, part of the bunch uh, the fact that I could stand on the roller skate, perfect. And I lost my balance and I immediately did the right thing. I went down. You actually have to like hug your knees. Uh, don't look, don't look downward, look forward. I knew all that. I practiced it. I, I it went really well for like 20 minutes. I could not skate yet. I 
I had trouble rolling even though I actually made the rollers like roll better. Maybe I have to loosen it up a bit more. I tried stopping, I tried to plow stop because it's a bit like scissors and for some reason it, n it didn't really work. But you know, um, every time I, I thought I would lose my balance in those 20 minutes, I did the right thing. I went down to my knees, I hugged my knees, I looked forward. Perfect. Uh, I could even like wobble a bit, do like penguin, uh, penguin walks. I could do all that. So I was like, okay, 20 minutes, fine. Let's let's put him off and then put on the safety gear and go outside. So I wanted to wobble to one of my chairs, and that's where it happened because I think I stood too much upright so my balance was too much backwards so I really f I fell backwards and while falling backwards I did like the worst thing that you can do while falling backwards um, if your head is not like in danger and that is using your arms and stretch your arms so I I caught myself with both my arms outstretched so all all my weight like all those like I weigh a lot all the weight was caught by my stretched arms by my wrists by my hands while I fell backwards and um, yeah that was painful so there was a big big uh, sound there was like a, a quite a, a massive sound while when I hit the floor and I really heard I was really hurt so I was clutching my arms uh, both my like I actually strained this wrist I strained I think part of my uh, part of my arms but my right hand like really hurt and it was swollen and it was looking weird um, I'm going to show you a picture of how it looks like because I actually with trembling fingers I could make a picture of my hand if you are sensitive don't look I will tell you when when to look back okay because it looks weird okay this is how my hand looked like I think a couple of minutes, like maybe one minute after I have fallen. So it was weird. I thought, this is not right. Um, how to deal with this? Okay, you can look back now if you didn't want to see the hand. Oh, I thought that, that doesn't look okay. But I've never broken anything in my life. I don't know how it looks like. I've strained things. I've bruised myself and I, I, I've had some accidents. But it was never like, oh yeah, you've broken anything. So I don't know how it felt like. And I, in my opinion, it didn't feel like it was broken. I don't know how much it should have hurt. I don't know how much it hurts. But I've, I'm used to... Uh, like the cartoonish kind of uh, things being broken like people being like in so much pain they cannot do anything people uh, like have bones sticking out that kind of stuff or having things in a very weird like 90 degree angle it wasn't the case so I'm like yeah okay so what is this so I sent that picture to my friends and family uh, mainly my parents uh, like, um, do you know what this is? Is this just a sprained or is this, um, is this a, a bit uh, worse? Should I go to the doctor? And everyone said like, well, if you can move your fingers, and I can, as you can see, I can also, <sighs> okay, not do that too much. Okay, I can, you, I can move my fingers. If you can move your fingers, it's not broken. So I'm like, okay, um, and they were like, yeah, just, just 
just put it on the water, uh, cool it down for like 15 minutes and you should be fine. So I did, I took a bucket and I plunged my arm in there in the cold water and I put it in there for like 45 minutes, maybe an hour and it was hurt like hell and uh, I was like, okay, maybe I take some painkillers and I s and if it if it gets better tomorrow and it's probably sprained if it doesn't get better tomorrow I probably need to go to the doctor didn't go that far because I already couldn't sleep um, by the way I while this was going on I I changed myself into my I, I took a shower I changed up into my pajamas I did I take took care of my cats I did everything um, just clutching my hand and and being like okay just carry this hand for now I don't know what's going on but it feels better when I'm holding it so yeah I just went to bed uh, <laughs> not not knowing what happened to my hand and at that time I, I never realized how much I moved while I was trying to sleep but I think every half hour, every 30 minutes, I wanted to switch sides if I wasn't like completely asleep. So every 30 minutes, I had to drag my arm to the other side, like drag my if I want to, I want to be on my other side. It was like dragging my arm and it hurt and, if I wanted, and it was painful. So I was like, OK, let's. It's the middle of the night. Let's go to the website of my of my doctor and uh, make an appointment. And it was the fifth of May, and my doctor was on holiday, so <laughs> he was not there. And I couldn't find uh, uh, which uh, doctors would be his replacement. So that was a bit of a bother. So I was like, okay, let's call emergency. Uh, services not like uh not like the 911 not like 112 here in the Netherlands but the Huisartsenpost which is like if it's not life threatening you call them to make an appointment or like for everything you cannot wait for in the weekend or or after doctor's hours so i i called them um and i got the answering machine and it's an answering machine that gives like you uh, it, it costs extra of course uh, you have to put your BSN number in there which is the the number of your citizenship and blah 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 and the thing was I couldn't find my citizenship like in my bedroom because it's on your driver's license and it's on your passport and etc and that was in another room and I couldn't get through the emergency line without it so it because I thought well it doesn't hurt that much uh, it's probably not broken it's just strained very badly I was like you know fuck it <laughs> I'm going back to bed so I managed to uh, I managed to, to just do my thing for about 15, 16 hours without uh, noticing that it was actually broken. And I went, uh, so when I woke up, which is about 5.30 in the morning, I, I was like, okay, my arm still really hurts. There's something wrong. Maybe I, it needs to be like taped in or whatever. Uh, let's let's have a doctor take uh, care of it but I couldn't get I couldn't go to the doctor because my doctor was holiday and didn't know who would replace them so I texted my manager be like I'm not going to work today <laughs> I I have fallen uh, of course not talked about how I've fallen but I have fallen I've I've done something with my arm I can't work I texted my parents I'll be like, I'm, I'm going, I'm coming to you. Um, I, I'm going to walk towards you. I'll be around. I'll be around there around seven. So with my 
in my hurtful arm, I, I think I showered. Yeah, I took a shower. I, um, what do you call it? I, I didn't, I didn't comb my hair to be fair, but I, I, I got myself clothes. I took care of the cats. I got myself uh, some food, all that kind of stuff while uh, clutching my hand and sometimes even using it because um, sometimes uh, you know your your plate is moving away or something is is not handling the way you want it so I was just using it with a lot of pain and um, I was like yeah okay and I have this um, this big scarf uh, for the winter that which I made in like uh, a homemade uh, sling so I could rest my arm and get there I couldn't I couldn't tie my shoes by the way that was kind of a bummer and I only had like my flat shoes are are laced shoes and my is it my shoes with zippers or with uh, velcro those shoes have like big heels on them and I didn't want to use heels back in, in that, that back there because I if I fall my hand will hurt so much more I really didn't want to do that so I I got my normal shoes and I sort of laced them like with one hand and very carefully with this hand which is like very painful because I couldn't really put pressure on my on my hand and I uh, I started walking and I was like I think a hundred meters out 150 meters out and my laces started to like untie so I'm like nah so I put them inside my shoes and I waited for the bus because my mom lives very near the bus stop uh, in the same line there where uh, where my bus goes so I was able to get on the bus get uh, like two minutes on the bus and had to get out again because my mom lives very nearby and uh, she uh, she was expecting me around that time so she opened the door and my mom is hopeful skeptical she was like, nah, it's not broken, but we, yeah, we, we get you to a doctor. So she called the, the number for uh, the practitioner and we finally got uh, the, the ones uh, that we needed. Uh, so one of the replacement doctors that we had to call again. And the thing is, you can only call to make an appointment between 8 and 11 a.m. I think it's almost with every doctor the same thing, but usually doctors, you can only call within like a limited amount of time to make an appointment. It will be on the same day or the day after, but it will be like very small time. And um, so everyone who needs an appointment with that doctor will call around 8 a.m. So it will take time to, to get through and get, your, get, your, get the assistant uh, there. But we got there, we, uh, we made an appointment, we only had to wait for like 45 minutes uh, before we had to go and, uh, and go there. So my mom, still being skeptical, was like, nah, it's not broken. And she, she started googling like how to know whether something is broken or not. So she put up the wiki how, <laughs> of all things, she put up a wiki how on how to discern whether it's something broken or strained. And uh, she's asking me all these questions like, can you still move your fingers? And yeah, I'm like, yeah, I can move my fingers. Can you turn your wrist? I'm like, I can, but it hurts. And you know, all those, all those things. So my mom was pretty, pretty certain it wasn't broken. And uh, yeah, so, so my mom said like self-diagnosing, okay, well, According to these questions, you don't have your, it's not broken. She, so she was 100% sure it wasn't broken. And uh, we, co we we actually go to the, do uh, to the practitioner, so the uh, family doctor 
and we have to go in the waiting room. The waiting room is is uh, something where you can put up your jacket and just wait. Of course, you have to wear your mask because pandemic and all that kind of stuff. And um, so the doctor calls my name. Um, I stand up. She takes one look at my arm and goes, "Yeah, I know where you're. From. I know why you're here." <laughs> And I was like, is it that obvious? Because it's just a little bit swollen and it's not it's not like bone sticking out or whatever. No, she was like, no, I'm here. So we go to her little practice room and uh, she's like, well, I'm not even going to touch that arm. I'm going to touch your other arms and you're going to get an x-ray. Uh, which is called a röntgen photo in Dutch, by the way. And... Uh, the thing was, so when I fell, it was the 4th of May, which is Remembrance Day in the Netherlands. And the 5th of May is Liberation Day. So the 4th and the 5th of May are in uh, remembrance of the world wars and all the people who have fallen and how we got liberated that day. So it's a very special time. And we found out that day, so the 5th of May, that all the people of the hospital are having a day off on 5th of May, except the emergency room. So we uh, we actually got there very fast. Uh, we just had to get a, a little printout from the doctor, go there, and fine. It was in another, it's in another city. Uh, I live in Zeist. I have to go to Utrecht. Utrecht is one of the bigger cities in the Netherlands. <laughs> Oh, that was a hiccup. So I had to go to Utrecht. Diokonesse House. Very great hospital. Very nice. They just uh, redact... Re... Ah! Refurbished uh, a part there. Rebuilt a part there. So I had to go to emergency services. My mom could park there, which was very nice. And uh, we got there. And, uh, of course, we had to be checked whether we had, like... The Rona, so we had these questions like, do you uh, have uh, no sense of taste, do you uh, cough a lot, do you have a high temperature, no, 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 okay. Uh, they took our temperature and they wrote it on this little label I got on my wrist. I don't have it now, but it was, they put a little label on my wrist to show that, I, yeah, I belong there and uh, that was my temperature. Um... And they gave me a clipboard, put me in the waiting room. Okay. Not even two minutes. No, I, th I think not even one minute One minute passed. We were not even able to uh, answer all the questions on the clipboard. And we were already called for like, yeah, it's your turn. We, uh, you can, uh, you can come with us. I was like, oh, okay. Two very nice gentlemen. I think one one doctor and one doctor T B. Yeah. Um were were treating us they're treating me. Very, very cute doctors. Are really <laughs> they were really nice. And uh they um uh, took us in the room and uh, I had to take off my jacket and they were really like yeah, that's broken. We're gonna take x-ray juice to confirm it, but that's broken. And my mom was still like, nah, it's not broken. I want to make a bet and like, mom, those are professionals. They have to deal with this every day, please. In like their direct family had broken a bone in that time. So it was because we don't have any experience with bones breaking. We don't believe that we break a bone. So I'm the first in the family that breaks a bone, like, <laughs> in forever. And uh, they, they got me to, to do the x-ray, the röntgen photo. The röntgen photo. My mom asked, like, uh, can I come with? And she's like, no. And she was, my mom was really upset. But I was like, okay. Uh, kind of obvious. And later on, I realized, because... 
yeah, I know a bit of science. X-rays are not very healthy for you. So having like people watching you while getting emerged in those in those in those rays is not a good idea. So yeah, <laughs> better better not get those X-rays if you don't need them. So yeah, that was very logical. So we get the first picture, uh, and the woman who is behind the screen goes. Yeah, it's definitely not sprained. <laughs> so I'm like, so it's broken. She said, like, I can't tell you. The doctors have to tell you. I'm like, oh. yeah. So we had to wait a bit. The cute doctors come back, and they're like, yeah, it's definitely broken. And they show us the picture. And I have the picture. So if you, again, if you if you are squeezy, you don't like uh, to watch this. Please go away. Or please turn your eyes because I'm going to show it to you. I am I myself I am I really fascinated about this. I don't know why, but I'm just really fascinated about this thing. So this is my arm. This is my right arm. This is my right arm. So as you can see here. There we go. There is something wrong with this picture. Here, this big piece. So that's around. That's here. It's completely broken through. And you can see it's actually a bit off. So yeah, that was problem number one. Problem number two is this thing. You see, you see here this. Ah, I'm trying to do the things with my left hand. That part is not supposed to be there. <laughs> it's supposed to be attached to the bone. Okay, I'm going to... There we go. For the ones who don't like it, uh, I got it back. So... The big bone, the the I have no idea. I don't know how the name. I don't know the names. The big bone is completely broken through. The other bone, a piece is missing, or at least it sprang away because of all the force was on what uh, was on there. And it was also a bit um, misaligned. So what? If you if you have never seen this, I think it's really fascinating. Uh, again, I'm going to show you. If you don't, if you feel squeezy very very easily, don't watch. So this was my arm. So what they first what they did was they put a sock around it. So that's this thing. Don't do too much. Put a sock around it, and then they put the. Uh, what they call the Chinese finger technique on them. So what you see is that my thumb and my index finger They are put in those like I call it a Chinese finger trap and There is a weight put onto it because what they had to do they had because it was misaligned they had to They had to pull my hands slowly apart for a little bit so they could straighten the bones and so I'm going back. Oh, you, you, it's not on the screen anymore. So I, I don't know how to how to explain this. Dutch medication, that's me, that use of medicine is probably a bit strange in comparison to other countries. Because you might think that I would get an aesthetic, I would get like uh, heavy painkillers, I would get like anything. I didn't. I got paracetamol, which is like things you can buy in every grocery store in the in the medicine uh, part. It's not prescribed. It's just like low. Uh, it's like ibuprofen. Uh, it, it's the lowest of the lowest painkiller. Where you, it's over-the-counter painkiller. I got 
two of those, and that's all. I, I didn't get anything else. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and of course, I'm in, I'm in pain, but it's not like I'm screaming, it's not like I'm... I'm fainting, it's not like I'm having like this massive... Um, Oh, that hurts. It, it's not that I have any massive reaction to what they're doing. So when they put the weight on the on the fingers on my thumb and my index finger, I think if I can if I can actually read it right, it's about four and a half five kilograms, so about ten pounds worth of weight on those fingers, on the two fingers alone. So imagine that you were trying to to get a heavy grocery bag and only only carry it with your with your two fingers. That's how it felt like. And it was yeah it hurt a bit. Uh, it wasn't like that bad. Um but it probably looked way worse than, than it actually was. And the, the most annoying bit that I thought was that I had to, I had this uh, big rod here. Probably because uh, otherwise it would put pressure on my shoulder. But I had this big rod here so it would only be like... Rah! So it would only pull this one and this one. And only pull this part. But don't put too much weight on it because that will hurt. <laughs> there we go. So I would only have two, two over-the-counter painkillers, and they would start, and then they would do the wrapping and all the stuff. And my mom was in there taking all the pictures. That's why I have the pictures. She was like, "Yeah, you always make pictures of everything." I'm like, "Yeah, okay. I'm not an Instagram model, so I don't take take pictures of everything." But yeah, I, I, I do appreciate these pictures. <laughs> they look very weird and they're very awkward, but it is a uh, part of my journey. You can actually, I actually, I actually have some more pictures here. So, oh. Yeah, so here you have, you have me. I had to wear a mask, uh, my own mask. And so they are trying to wrap it up in the gypsum before they put the color on there. And ah, oh, you cannot see the face. Ah, oh, that's a shame. But so the the doctor to be very cute doctor to be. He wanted to specialize in uh, in treating hands and arms and that kind of. So the fact that I came in made him very very happy. Which was a bit of weird. <laughs> it was a bit weird. But you know, it was also very, very adorable that someone being very passionately about treating hands and, and arms. Being like, yeah, I can practice on you if you want. And like, do, uh, especially the, how to, how to prepare someone for it. How to talk to someone. Uh, how to make sure that they are uh, relaxed because they say you have to relax your arm which is difficult because they are pulling at your arm and tr and doing things to your arm that hurt but he, he was like yeah how you're feeling and all that kind of stuff and because they could not see my mouth because I had to wear a mask uh, he was constantly like asking questions and be like be a very joyful doctor, by the way. And this? Yeah, so they're wrapping up my arm. I think that's it, yeah. My mom is not the greatest of taking pictures, but... It was... It, it was, uh... At least I have pictures. At least we have the pictures. So, yeah. I, um... I was wrapped up, gotten, uh, I got some more painkillers, which over-the-counter painkillers, and like, and now I have to wait until Tuesday, which is the 11th of May, so, by, so, while I'm recording and I have to wait 
to to see how it is progressing. So what's happening is that they're waiting for about a week uh, or so on Tuesday. I have to go back to the hospital. They're back from holiday, by the way. So it's the normal normal treatment. Uh, I have to go back to the hospital. I have to take another x-ray to see if the bones have aligned. If it didn't work, I have to go into surgery. Not something I'm looking forward to, but whatever. Um, there is a possibility that I am going into surgery. Because um, after I got wrapped up, they took another x-ray and it, it looks like it's aligned, but they, it's squashed too much. It could be because of the fact that it was swollen and everything, you know, it's, it's, it's reacting to everything. But there is a chance that it's too compressed, so they actually have to put in a metal plate down... Uh, down my wrist, down my arm, and I don't know how long that will take. So yeah. So that's the story. So basically, that's how I. That's where I am right now. I'm basically doing most of the stuff myself. I I live on my own. I take care of my cats. I dress myself. I feed myself, except for, uh, except for dinner time. Uh, I just go to my mom or get picked up by my mom or she brings uh, food here uh, but most of the times I just go to my mom um, which is uh, a good thing because that actually makes me go out so I have to wait until Tuesday to see if I need surgery if I do not need surgery I probably need to need to have this cast for at least like five weeks six weeks I think if I do need surgery, I have no idea how long it will last. So, yeah, this arm is my dominant arm. So, my r I am right-handed. This also means that it is very difficult to draw, write, uh, make art, or anything. And it's very difficult for me to go into the forest and make videos. Let's let's put that up front. I I can't handle all the gear that I'm normally taking with me, uh, making making the videos that I'm normally doing. So yeah, so I have this mini bitch uh, marathon going on for a couple of weeks still. There are uh, very short videos, but there are also uh, videos that are longer that I'm really proud of. They're really fun. They're really nice. I did some research uh, about um, Radio Veronica and uh, Atlantic Wall. And those are the longer videos. They're very nice. They will c they will all come there. And I just hope that by the time the beach mini marathon is over, I am prepared or I can do some more videos. Otherwise. There will be an hiatus uh, and I, I certainly hope you understand why that is now <laughs> because I st just can't handle it um, uh, in terms of uh, my webcomic I had a lot of uh, pages prepared but they still need to be colored uh, so there will be an hiatus in there unless I learn how to uh, at least color my pages with my left hand but that will be difficult because I already realized that it's very difficult to do things with my left I am definitely not ambidextrous um, of course I can learn um, it won't be the same though uh, and I certainly won't be like sketching or really inking with this hand maybe coloring is something I can do uh, I've been mostly working on my podcast. Ouch. Because if there's something I can do that's speaking into the microphone. So I can do podcast. I can do voice acting. I am trying to get my voice acting hobby back up. Uh, anything to do with voice. Um, 
maybe I can get um, a program that um, oh that can write down dictations. That would be nice. I don't know. I I think there are a lot of programs that can do that where you only have to tweak tweak a bit. But I'm not sure. But yeah, for for all the things that I'm normally doing. Uh, of course, I can't do like full-time uh, work right now because I'm very, very quickly tired and I'm in pain and I can't type or I can type a bit, but not that much. <coughs> um, but also my hobbies are like not, I can't do my hobbies. And I hope you understand. <laughs> That's that's the main thing that's coming out of this. I hope you understand. Uh, for the ones um, wondering whether I will sell my uh, roller skates or ever ever try them again, I will try it again. I am probably going to see if I can take lessons or at least be with someone. Uh, so it's easier to learn and it will be easier to... Um, to have direct contact. Um, by the time this has healed and I am allowed to to go on roller skates, I probably can uh, can go with other people. The, I hope people have been vaccinated a lot and that kind of things. And the pandemic is sort of officially over, but you never know. So yeah, um, there will be part of an hiatus probably, most certainly for some things, but yeah. It's a story I can tell to my hopeful kids, if not, maybe younger people. And now I've told it to you. Okay, thank you for watching, thank you for being here. If you want to comment, please comment. I, uh, I'm reading everything. <laughs> I, don't have any, I don't have much more to do. To be fair, um, I, so I realized, so I, I, I've grown, I realized a couple of things. I realized that uh, it takes a lot of turns for me to fall asleep. So I, I'm very, mo I move a lot when I'm trying to sleep. But also, I have zero pain when it comes to um, doing things. Um, because I, ca I can't draw, I can't write, I normally do all these things. If I if I'm sitting in front of TV, I will I will do art. I will crochet for whatever. I will do things. I will I will think of stories. I will I will draw doodles. I will I will. I, my mind is busy, and now I can just sit in front of the TV and watch TV. And I was kind of done with that for after after 40 minutes after arriving from the hospital <laughs> so my mom put me in front of their tv and was like yeah you can watch bbc first something that i usually watch when i'm there but i'm if when i'm watching tv i'm scrolling on my phone or i'm doing whatever i'm drawing or whatever and now it's just like I can't do that. I can barely scroll on my phone. I can, I can't draw. I can write. What the hell is this? This is so boring. <laughs> I'm so bored. I'm so sick of it. Can I already get this cast off me, please? Can it be done? And so yeah, the fact that I still I have to wait for at least six weeks is just. Tremendously awful. I don't like it so much. I, I hate it so much. So I probably really have to practice with my left hand. Uh, although my left hand is strained as well. So if I move my left wrist a bit too much, it starts to hurt as well. So I have to actually take care of that too. So I'm a bit of a pickle there. But yeah, I, as you can see, I can just do chatting and uh, you know, I can do voices and that kind of stuff. So yeah, I'm going to end this because I'm, I'm just blabbering about it. So if you want to see more of me, I have a lot of stuff uh, going on. 
I've done a lot of stuff for uh, for the webcomic. I have a lot of lore, so you can watch those videos. Uh, I have a lot of uh, videos for the Beach Mini Marathon that are still coming out. Uh, they won't be uh, subtitled by me right now because it takes a bit too much effort to, to get subtitled. Um, if you didn't know, I actually subtitle all my all my videos except for the April Fool's video, but I, it's just not possible. Probably do it afterwards uh, because I think it's important if you if you want to read uh, along. Uh, especially like I also talk about Dutch things, so I want to uh, I want to subtitle it in Dutch and in English. But yeah. So I'm going to stop right here <laughs> because I, I'm just talking space. Um, so thank you very much. See you another time, hopefully with better news. Uh, 